we successfully got our trusses all into position. They're all fixed. There's a nailing schedule for when you're laminating trusses together. We've got a three ply and we've got a four ply, which simply means that's three trusses and four trusses and they're all fixed together. And there's a particular way of fixing them as per the manufacturer's um, drawings. We've also got up our lattice ridges. I've talked about these lattice ridges before. These are a pair of lattice ridges here. Now these ones travel from the end of this truss here all the way over to the load bearing wall which is beneath me here and they do the work of that ridge there. Then we've got a pair of lattice trusses on either side of this big set of trusses here and then we're building a gable so we've already got a pair of common rafters cut and these ones here are for setting out we're setting out everything from these common rafters so you can see that we've got an ashlar wall which is going to come in underneath here and be directly underneath here and that's going to hold this whole section of roof through here we've got lots of rafters now there's only three spans on this whole job there's the first span we call the span number one and it's 7605 millimeters from the outside of our oak to the outside of the wall plate on the other side and that ridge runs parallel all the way through that's the dominating part of the roof and that's obviously the highest because it's the widest span the second span span number two is behind me if i come over here the second span is from this wall plate all the way to the other side and that's 6960 so that's around about 800 millimeters just under three feet smaller which will give us a slightly lower ridge height on that section. Then in what will be an ensuite bar from here, we have got the smallest of the three spans and that's running at around about 4.8 meters and that roof will pass up through here. So it's really quite straightforward. The roof pitch is 45 degrees. Now that's just what the old roof was on this building. So the new one's 45 degrees. There's no rhyme or reason to what pitch or what governs the pitch of a roof other than an architect might have drawn it at a particular pitch or it might be matching houses adjacent to it or you might be working to a maximum or minimum height. So we're going to get on, carry on cutting some timbers. We've got a pair here ready to go up on the gable. So we'll put a scaffold here, some tower scaffold here and we'll hook the ends on the plates, scissor them together fix them up, brace them, that will enable us to get the gable end stud work formed on both ends to sit our lattice ridge trusses on. So we've got a lot to do and we're going to get on with that now. Still all right? Yeah, looking pretty good, isn't it? Plate to plate, that's where we really want to plumb it from. Obviously not there. You know what? Uh, yeah, but we can't. You can't have a four foot level on because right. it's obviously a lot tighter at this point because of the, um, the metal work, isn't it? Oh yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. That is. Then we'll just see what this is doing at that point there. It's a bit more crude, but yeah, we're pretty good there. Yeah, happy. Happy. So we know, we know that this can stay until we get this bit of roof framed and braced. So what we'll do is you'll take one side on the drill, mm -hmm. I'll take the other side, step on your plastic or put a bit of... I've got another spreader somewhere. Ready when you want it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can go in the middle. So for, for now, Ed, just put, it, just put it on the trestles. Come around like that. Put that side on the trestles, but don't go on the mark yet. Just go roughly where we are. And then we'll all get into position. Now, Ed, you've just got to be a little bit careful because you're holding, you're holding it about that far out, yeah? Yeah, but it will, it will, because of this, it will hold itself nice and steady, yeah? Mm -hmm. Just going to feed it all together, yeah? I just think you need to straighten that screw up there. See where it's kicking it over there? Just we'll pull that one out quickly, just to straighten it up a bit. That's it, mate. Just 
go somewhere else. That's it. Fine. Anyway. anyway. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Lovely. So you got a gun. Yeah. Everyone happy? Yep. It's gonna spin mine. All right. Everyone in position. So what we're going to do is, is rattle it all together first. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Use your hammer. We've got the bottom. Now, that's it. You going? Yeah. Yeah. You going? Yeah. Nice and gently towards the bottom. Two of the points are the same at the top. Happy? Yeah? Are you on your mark over there, bro? Yeah, but I need to come in. I need to come in and spread. Yeah, we'll push it in then, that's it. Yeah. It's all up to you, yeah. that, yeah? Yeah. Now you get your fixes in. Yeah. yeah, no tapping at the minute, Ed. Yeah. yeah. All right. But it fitted good, didn't it? Yeah. You know, the overall principle fitted good, didn't it? Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a bit. Nice on the plates there. Hmm. I'll be nice and plumb there. And you know if you get it wrong, you'd know it's it straight away on there. Just right. Once we screw that top in, it'll pull it over a bit, yeah, won't it? Yeah, when you put two ridges, which are, clamp everything together as well. All right, so we don't need to screw that because that will just push out again and we'll unscrew it and push it up with the ridges when we put the ridge in, yeah? Okay. We'll get another pair at one end, push the ridges through, and it'll be happy days, yeah? Two, three, two, three. Two, three, two, three. So we need to get something to support that here. Two, three, two, three. Two, three, seven, five. 52 mil. So that hangs down 52 mil. Yeah. So how would you do that? How would you want to attach that to there? The ridge. Mm. Yeah, we'll put a hang around it at some point. But for now, if, because we know it's only hanging down 50 mil. Well, you can screw up into there, can't you? Yeah, so the ridge, bottom of the ridge hangs down further. Yeah? So you've got. You, yeah, so I would suggest that we put a, a piece of, you know, stout 2 by 2 across with a nice bit of OSB hanging off it, like a plate. So we screw through the back of the OSB and to, to hold. So the OSB, OSB would be flush with this here. A timber across the back to hold the OSB. OSB patches is hanging down. Yeah, yeah. We'll mark a level line on it. Yeah, put a bit of batten on it so it sits on there. We can just position it, right. just so it can be free until we got this pair of rafters in. That'll send. They'll centre it, and we'll just stab a fixing through the back of the OSB, and that can stay there to a point. Or we can take it out afterwards and put the hang around it. Put the hang around it because it won't be in the way of the hanger because the hanger's going to be there. Yeah. Well, you could put the hanger on, but if you put the hanger on, you're not exactly sure where the centre's going to be. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We have got a centre mile down there, but we want it to be as per the rafters for it, yeah? Look at that sky, that's amazing, isn't it? So that's looking pretty good. We'll just put a, a, a temporary batten on this one, so it doesn't move, all right? Right, so the easiest way to do this one is get a string line around one side and plumb it up with a stick. Turn the switch way. Yeah, Ensure sure happy? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right, that's good. Yeah, we haven't got to worry too much in a minute. We just need to make sure when we get the ridge in, got all the rafters in, then we'll put a proper brace on, straighten the first one up. Because bear in mind, I'm going to put these plates on here from my fix through there. It's going to straighten them up. Like T's, there'll be like a T I'll be fixing all the way through there with the head plate of the stud wall. Yeah, yeah that's just hard against my head plate. So this can be flippy floppy, but when we put a nice bit of 8x2 through, it'll be pucker.
So you guys have done a real good job. The guys have just made this roof and in fact they are learning the roofing square or my method of the roofing square and using the app. So they're test driving the product for me and they've just done brilliantly. I mean obviously both good chippies. We've got Ollie and you all know Ed and um, they've done really really nicely. This particular roof all out of 8 by 2 and I'm very fanatical about just how tight everything is and everything needs to be, how well spaced out it is, how plumb the rafters are, the selection of timber. Anyway, they've done really well. We'll have a look at that in a while. We next need to do the ridges, the scarf joint ridges, which are going to run all the way through from this large gable to the party wall here and beyond, and then from side to side, so all the way through. So they're on the bench. We're going to set those out and get those done and that should be brilliant because we can cut them, put them out of the way, they're all ready for when we need to stick them in. So the very first job when I'm doing scarf joint ridges or scarf joint hips, valleys, whatever, is making sure you pick out the timbers that will make a nice pair or make a nice ridge. Now, one of our ridges is just about 12 meters long and the other one is around about nine meters long. So I've got some stock lengths that are really long I'm going to put a joint immediately on the end of one and I'm happy with this selection of timber. So this is a pair of timbers for one ridge. This is a pair of timber for another ridge. Now what we're up against is lots of different things. For example, the higher the timber, the more you get issues like this one here. You can see how when I put my steel square over, it rolls around and the same for that one. And so what happens then is when you're using a circular saw and you're cutting across, it's going to go over and down, which effectively changes the cut a little bit. So there will be some issues with binding and that sort of stuff. So you can eliminate, eliminate that as much as possible by making sure the one that you cut first is as flat as it can physically be. Now you can take a small plane and just try and plane them off flat but you're reducing the width and all the rest of it the thickness and it might change things about but we're not worried about that we're sight chippies we can get over anything that's what we do now i'm going to get myself my pencil out of my pouch just get that pouch on might as well stick it on it's got all of my bits and pieces i need in it there we go these things are a godsend i used to hate wearing my pouch because it used to sort of like play on my back a bit but the the braces thing is pretty damn awesome. I would recommend them, highly recommend them, fine. So, pencil stuck up there. Here are the basics of the scarf joint. So, you take the height of the timber. In my case, it's 225, and the joint is three times the height. So that'll be, in this case, 675 millimeters. That's the overall length of the joint. I'm using the full end. Full length, there's no benefit of cutting the end off there. So that is the full length of the joint. Now, we have to have, how it basically works is we are doing this. Okay, that's one piece and that's the other piece and there's a connecting pair of folding wedges. So when you lock them together, drive the wedges in, it pushes this one this way and it pushes that one that way and you can get a nice mechanical fix in through these shoulders at that point and that gives you a really nice strong job. They're not for joining floor joists together, so a spanning member. They're for connecting timbers like ridges, hips, valleys that are fully supported. But what it does do, instead of just butting them together, it's giving you that really nice lateral restraint. So that's the overall size of the joint. Now, I've made my square similar to the size of our structural timber, and I like to use that for the thickness of the joint, okay? And so what I do is we're gonna come in a, a certain amount here and a certain amount there, and then we're gonna draw either side of that line to give us the two shoulders. So we'll come in 40 mil there, 40 mil there. Now if that was the center of the joint, let me get a level. 
So effectively what we're going to have is we're going to have one shoulder travelling this way and we're going to have one shoulder travelling this way to make this nice locking joint. We've got people all over the place. It's amazing, isn't it? We also need to know where the centre of that joint is. So 675, half of that is 337. That's the centre of the joint. Let's just have a little line through there so we know where we're going. So mark a centre line this way, 225, 112 and a half there. So effectively what we've got is we've got one piece there and then we've got the other one here. So that is the basis of, of the joint. I've, I've connected this side of this block to that shoulder. I've connected that side to that shoulder and I've basically drawn on either side. Then we take a square and we give ourselves a shoulder down the middle, of course, there, which makes two equal ends. We also square off these shoulders here this is why I particularly like a framing square because you can get a really nice marked up job. That, believe it or not, is the simplicity of a scarf joint. That is it. Now I'm obviously taking out this bit here. And we simply cut that off. And that's the only time we mark the joint because we use the timber to mark its pair. So therefore, if you cut that and it goes a little bit awry, when you mark your joint, you're gonna follow that as well. You'll use that circular saw to follow that. So this is basically what we're gonna take out. I'll get my ear defenders on. I'll pick up a circular saw. I'll try and do it with an 18 volt. This stuff's quite um, wet. Let's give it a go. I've got this one here. We'll try this one first.
So once you've cut an end ready, then you'll take the piece that it's going to join to and we'll lay that on. Well, in our case, we're lucky because we've got this big, long, straight, flat floor to work on. If I didn't have this, I'd be on the road, I'd be on the drive, in the back garden somewhere, as long as there's somewhere long enough and straight enough to put it. So if you can cop the end of that ollie, and I'm going to take my end um, over the top for a sec. I'm going to come around here. We'll lay it out the back, I reckon. If we lay that out the back here, all the way down. Let's keep it going. That's it. So we've got plenty of space in front of us. If we spin this one right round, I'll go over the top here. Lovely. So what we're going to be basically doing is offering them on top of one another. Yeah, you could probably lift that through the gable, that one. Yeah. It'll still be flat enough. A bit more. That's good. OK. We'll just block this end up. So what we're doing is literally marking it like a template. But what we need to do is get a string line all the way through and make sure it's straight first. That's the first job. So Ollie's just going to attach his rave line because it looks like the sort of thing you'd go to a rave with. It's nice and bright though, mate. Why are you so tall? Everyone's so tall. Huh. And if you can attach that around the end of there. Yeah. Nice yep, yeah, lovely and tight. Danny, you got your Cub Scout knot badge. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure that ends so, so all we're doing, boys, is literally we're just going to the line now and we just tap the middle in and out until we're happy. So people have asked me before when they've seen me doing scarf joints, they said, why don't you just make a plywood template? It's great. You can make a plywood template and put it in the van and use it just for one end. But what you're up against is timber, even regularised timber, can vary in height. So, you know, working off, we're a bit like doing joinery, we're working off what's going to be the top, regardless of the bottom not matching slightly. The other thing as well, you may get a bit of a kick in the end of your timber where you hold that template and that's going to give you a, a dodgy joint if the timber's going off like that. So, whereas this, we're looking at this member, this ridge member as a whole now from end to end, using this string. So when we actually attach the two together, we know that they were straight when they were marked, so when we were cutting them. Okay, so let's take this as the top or the face side, if you like. Now, you can see there's a little bit of play there, so it's, I'd say that that is fairly straight. But what I want to do now is just give myself a little mark with a pencil. This is only a little bit of experience of doing all these things over the years. And I'm just going to take me, myself about five millimetres this way. And I'm going to set my joint up like that. So a weeny bit out of straight. A weeny bit out of straight. Because when I put it together, it's going to, under its own weight, it's going to want to sort of do that a little bit. And that will just help it not fall away too much, not scissor away too much. It certainly wouldn't support its own weight because of the length of it, but um, this will mean that it's in some sort of compression. So, you can see now that we've got a nice flat top, they're nice and straight, I'm happy with all of that, and we will simply mark that one over that one with the elusive pencil. Here he is. So, I'm going to just use my pencil, it's nice and solid, it's nice and flat, and I'm just going to mark over the top. 
And that's exactly what we want to cut. We know it's going to fit because we're templating from the joint. So if we were using that bit of ply, a template for example, I've tried it, don't get me wrong. Of course, that's the first thing I thought about. I love a jig. It didn't work. It was a little bit out and I couldn't fathom out why. And then I realized the complexities of timbers and bends and shakes. So this is the way of getting it absolutely spot on. So we'll cut that one out. And that's half the joint finished. Do it in situ, I'm not gonna move it again. Whack your box under there, mate. Lovely job. It's useful having these super strong toolboxes and that's about the right height for me as well. So let's get the circular. There's part two. Now let's get them together. When I started setting the joint out, I talked about folding wedges, but when I cut the joint, I haven't allowed for, the, for those wedges at the moment, but all it is is simply taking off the same amount from each one of these. I can do that at this point. There's no need for that bit to be there anymore. And the reason I don't do it before is because I want to mark it all completely. And these can just be fashioned out by hand we just cut that out quickly like this. And the same on the other one. Now, that's ready to try together. There you go, Ollie. Nice one, mate. It's such a luxury having a floor to work on. Many years ago, we never put the floors down first. We joist it out, pitch the roof, and we'd be falling around on bits of ply and all sorts of stuff. But this is an absolute luxury. It's like having a massive workshop. Right, I'm just gonna pull him up put the shoulders somewhere near where they should be and we will have ourselves a joint. So the idea is now when we put our wedges in we knock them together it pushes the shoulder to the shoulder here the shoulder to the shoulder here and it's a fabulous job. 